In the suburbs of Woodenville, American parents are raising their children in the modern way as seen fit by their culture. The overwhelming majority of American parents say strong moral character is very important, if not essential, to their children's future. Parents say they invest much effort in shaping the moral character of their children and highly value these traits. Being honest and truthful, having a strong moral character, being loving, reliable, and dependable, being hardworking, and preserving close ties with their parents and family, and being financially independent and highly educated. This leads to a style of parenting known in American culture as helicopter parenting that enables the parents to completely control their children's social and academic lives. For example, the greatest worries and fears for the children center on injury of an accident, sexual assault, addiction to alcohol and drugs, and lack of ambition to succeed in life. Some of these fears may seem varied, but they all lead into each other. For instance, addiction to alcohol and drugs can lead to a lack of ambition to succeed in life. As do most of these fears, and over the years, the parents have devised an overprotective and sometimes controlling method toward the parenting strategies. A dean at Stanford University, Julie Linthcott Hames, explains how American parents are parenting today and the impacts on children because of this style. She also explains the reasons behind the switch to this parenting style beginning in the 1980s. We're overprotective, we are providing way too much direction, and we're doing a lot of hand-holding or what I call concierging our kids. With the best of intentions from a very loving place, we're doing too much for them and we're undercutting their chances to be self-actualized, competent, capable, confident adults. I think there were a lot of forces at work in the early 1980s that really conspired against children in some ways. First, our fear of stranger danger was born. A couple of terrible, high-publicized cases of stranger abduction made it into the media, and um, our nation's sense that there were strangers lurking on every corner was born. The statistics don't bear out those fears, and yet we, we act as if that's um, likely to happen. Number two, uh, the play date was born in, in 1984. Parents began scheduling play, but more than that, supervising play, <laughs> intervening when kids were having trouble working things out for themselves. Um, the self-esteem movement was born also in the early 1980s, the sense that we should just applaud kids for showing up, yes. give them a trophy and a ribbon and a certificate. And then finally, A Nation at Risk was published, and it said we weren't faring as well in the U.S. as uh, against our, uh, compared to our international peers. And, uh, you know, kids needed to be taught uh, uh, to the test, more testing, more homework. So this confluence of things happening in the early 1980s resulted in a set of young adults mm -hmm. who came to college starting in the late 1990s who still had their parents very much involved in their academic lives, their personal lives, and so on. In fact, four out of five parents believe that children are very vulnerable and must be protected, and claim that they invest much effort in protecting their children from negative social influences. Seven out of 10 parents, about 72%, say they invest much effort in providing opportunities that will give their children a competitive advantage down the road. Nine out of 10 parents, Around 91% cutting across racial and ethnic differences say they invest much effort in shaping the moral character of their children. 62% of parents indicate that they monitor their children's homework almost always and another 23% say they do at least moderately. All of these statistics result in the expected conclusion. Parents who have an extreme need for their children to succeed in life, or rather, they are acclimating their children to society based strictly around academic achievement and being a moral person. American parents tend to load their children with high expectations and micromanage their lives. Jolie Lithcott Hames, a dean at Stanford University, explains the effects of doing so. Parents feel a kid can't be successful unless the parent is protecting and preventing at every turn and hovering over every happening, and micromanaging every moment, and steering their kid towards some small subset of colleges and careers. When we raise kids this way, and I'll say we, because Lord knows in raising my two teenagers, I've had these tendencies myself, our kids end up leading a kind of checklisted childhood. And here's what the checklisted childhood looks like. We keep them safe and sound and fed and watered. 
And then we want to be sure they go to the right schools, but not just that, that they're in the right classes at the right schools, and that they get the right grades in the right classes in the right schools. But not just the grades, the scores. And not just the grades and scores, but the accolades and the awards, and the sports and the activities and the leadership. We tell our kids, don't just join a club, start a club, because colleges want to see that. And check the box for community service. I mean, show the colleges you care about others. <laughs> And all of this is done to some hoped-for degree of perfection. We expect our kids to perform at a level of perfection we were never asked to perform at ourselves. Meanwhile, in Seattle's International District of Chinatown, Chinese parents are raising their children in their traditional way while in an American setting. Unlike their Western counterparts, most Chinese parents emphasize academic skills above all other skills, including interpersonal skills. For instance, many p Chinese parents use shame as a model for instilling principles of right and wrong in their children. This form of psychological control is known as a child-rearing tactic, often in instances of teaching moments and discipline. This in comparison to American and Western styles of parenting, in which we praise positive reinforcement and emphasize to protect and promote self-esteem. Chinese parents tend to focus on the negative behavior and decisions of the child. They may scold or even physically punish the child for the bad behavior, as they are likely using a more controlling and less responsive parenting style. The style of parenting paints them as a figure and the child as something of a subject to the parent. Flori Un, assistant professor, explains the effects of the stressful, strict, and academic-based environment Chinese children are being raised in. Studies show that Chinese students tend to be far harder on themselves than their Western counterparts. Assistant Professor Flori Ng has been researching cultural attitudes towards success and failure. Chinese children, compared to European-American children, um, said that they were less likely to feel happy and proud about their success and more likely to feel upset and ashamed about their failure. For European-American parents, they may focus too much on helping their children feel good about themselves and not paying enough attention about their problems or their foibles. But for Chinese parents, they may focus too much on helping children improve their performance at the cost, perhaps, um, of children's emotions. So in traditional Chinese society, the way to climb the social ladder would be to do well in the uh, public exam, right? To become officials. Um, and I think it, this has somehow continued in the, in the press how much pressure is too much? It's a tough call. Oh, yeah! <laughs> One thing's clear, though. Behind every busy kid is a concerned parent trying hard to give his or her child a leg up, a chance to get ahead of the crowd. Where does this thinking come from? What made them think this way? Well, the answer to that lies in the philosophy of the parenting. See, most Chinese people come from a Confucian background. Hence, this philosophy influences their parenting. This philosophy emphasizes respect for authority, devotion to parents, emotional restraint, and the importance of education. Most practices of Chinese parenting are based on the concepts of Xiaoshan, to train, and Guan, to govern and to love. These concepts create an environment that is very academically centered for the children and can influence and pressure them into extreme academic success or failure. In a way, it's a weaning process to separate those who can succeed in academics and those who will crack under the pressure. <laughs>